or as my friend Leif says, hello, hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm a really good friend, Leif Hetland, with me today. And uh, this is Brent Locker uh, with Vibrant Life. And it's just my joy to find different ways to help you encounter the goodness of a father who is so in love with you and and, a, and Jesus who came to show us that love perfectly, to show us what the father looks like. And uh, so, um, and we also have a conversation going on over on Facebook. It's uh, Brent Locker with Vibrant Life. So come on over if you want just conversations about a good God. It's really life-giving. And, uh, but I want to get onto just talking with uh, my friend Leif and, um, <laughs> Man, Leif, I, I've got, whenever I think about you, I laugh, I smile, because <laughs> you you bring so much joy to me. But um, I really don't know how many years it's been. I sometimes lose years, but probably a decade or so. I don't know. When you first started coming to our church, Blazing Fire, and um, I had heard about you ahead of time through Paul Manwaring um, at Bethel Church. He said, man, you and Leif have a really similar heart. You got to meet each other. And man, what a blessing it's been. And you've, you know, you've come to our place and just released uh, so much love, so much blessing, so much of the Father's goodness. So anyway, that's, I, I, I can't even go into, we don't have time to go into all the times we've shared together, how special you are to me, but uh, just share a, a little bit about yourself before we get into the topic at hand, all right? Oh, sure. It's my honor. And first of all, it is always a joy to be with you, Brent. And, <laughs> and just, uh, I just love the relationship, the friendship, and have also so many good memories <clears throat> that I also can start laughing right now. But then a little bit about myself. Many of you will hear that I have a little bit different accent. And even my name is not like a normal name in the States. My name is Leif Hetland, not Leif Hetland, like they say <laughs> in the States. And I am from the country of Norway. Actually, we just got home from Norway on Saturday night, where we have two daughters that live in Norway. One is about to get married. So we spent some time with our future son-in-law. And then we have a, a, a son here in Atlanta and a daughter in Atlanta that both have their special in their life. So we are very, very blessed and I've been married to Jennifer. She is a Cherokee Indian. I'm a Norwegian Viking. So you can imagine what kind of a kids we have. And even more, the kind of a grandkids. Yeah. So that's the kind of a little bit about just the family background. And I, I have the honor of uh, right now fathering a movement. That we call it a kingdom family movement. But also I started a, a couple of organizations. One is called Global Mission Awareness. And anyone that knows me, there's a couple of things. One is the very message that you and I have in common and what we're going to also talk a lot about now. And the second part of my message is uh, I, this, this good, good papa. I want everyone in the world to know how good God is and how loved they are. And then I just realized that 3.4 billion people, which is about half of the world's population almost, have little or no access to this goodness and the good news. Mm. And 1.7 billion people have never once heard the name of Jesus. They don't wow. know that. God is a good God. So I spend half of my time going into the darkest places in the world because I'm in the light business. I go to those <laughs> fearful places because I'm in the love business and yeah. perfect love always casts out fear. And I'm one of those people that don't believe we have a darkness problem in the world, but lack of light, including everything that is happening now in Ukraine with Russia. There's a lot of darkness. I'm not saying that, but the solution to that is light. Yes. Not, we do not see the orphan spirit at this place. But that's where the Father's love comes in. And this is where this perfect love takes away fear, where the terrorist Saul becomes the Apostle Paul. And that's uh, been a lot of my assignment, especially for the last, I would say, 26, 27 years that I've had yes. the honor. I've traveled to about 103 countries, uh, all the 50 states. But my big uh, honor is to be able to go into the darkest places, and especially in the Muslim world, to be able to be an ambassador of love. Uh, that's what they call me. And yes. that's that's a privilege for me to represent the king and hopefully i represent him in a well and in, 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 in a way where i have practiced for over 20 years the language of love which is mm -hmm. the language the blind eyes can see and the deaf ears can hear so that's yeah. a little bit for me i've also written about 14 books and most of them are on the topic that we are talking about so i'm <laughs> very excited about that so good. You know what? I'll, I'll put some links uh, down below to one or two of your books, uh, you know, in this uh, YouTube video. 
And uh, man, you you are an apostle of love. Uh, I heard about you long before I knew you, and just your love transforming the earth. And and that's true for for anyone who's watching this. It love the love within you is what transforms the world. So. You just mentioned a, a, a minute ago, Leif, in your introduction about, um, you mentioned something about an orphan spirit, and that's kind of where we want to go today is to, I just know you 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 have a way of just really helping people understand, um, you know, what, what that orphan spirit looks like, but much more importantly is how to, how we can engage with and, and accept and receive our sonship, uh, you know, being sons and daughters of the king loved, accepted. So I, I just would love for you to talk for a little bit about that. I, I uh, yeah, just, just go ahead and, and share a little bit about that process, so starting with what is it that's an orphan? Uh, yeah, yeah. The best way I can describe it first is to just share my own story and my own okay. journey. Uh, I was about, yeah, first of all, while I was in my mother's womb, she ended up with a surgery. So uh, she didn't know she was pregnant until that moment. So the last four and a half months while she carried me, she had fear. Mm. And when I was about 12 years old. There was an abuse that took place <clears throat> that just totally changed me. And from there, shame came in. And later on, guilt came in. And then from mm. I was 13 to I was 18, I ended up as a prodigal son. And I ended up as a suicidal drug addict at the age of 18. Mm. And then when I was 18, I got saved and healed and delivered. And it was an amazing thing. And then I went from being a prodigal son to be a prodigal brother. Mm. So I went from rebellion to religion, and then I started to live for right. that love because I didn't know how to live from love. Right. And eventually, I knew Jesus, and because Jesus saved me, healed me, delivered me, he was the Lord of my life. I left my country, Norway, and I'm willing to give my life to serve Jesus. And I became a very good servant for Jesus uh, because that's what servants does. They serve. And right. then later on, uh, many of you have heard my story, where June 6, 1995, by then I was a Baptist pastor. And I was pastoring in Norway. My desperation level was greater than my fear level. Mm. And Dr. Randy Clark, he was not a doctor at the time, but this was during the Toronto era. He came to my little place and I was one of the few that stood on the line and he prayed for them. By the, pray for some pastors. There was 30 of us in this room. But when it came to me, he said, you are a bulldozer and you're going to go into the darkest places in the world where the gospel has never been before. And you're going to mm. make a way where there is no way and thousands of people are following after you. And I ended up on the floor and I was electrocuted. And then the, it was fire and electricity, fire and electricity for two and a half hours. And when I came up from that floor, I was a different person. Mm. But on the inside, I was still an orphan. Mm -hmm. On the inside, I still had a black hole in my soul. There was still love deficiency. So mm -hmm. now you are an orphan with power, with dynamites, operating in the gifts of the spirit. But orphans then would blow up things because when there's love deficiency in your life, there is also God deficiency because mm -hmm. God is love, 1 John 4, 16. So as a result of that, now with an orphan with power, I got my value, what I'm doing for God, not right. what I'm doing from God. Right. I became a good achiever because in the orphan world, you have to do, to have, to become. Right. It's a good tendency to see the orphan spirit. It's because the orphan always has to perform for love. Right. And then by the year, it makes my story short, in year 2000, I mean, here I am. I'm competing with other people instead of completing other people. Mm. Is what I'm doing for God instead of, again, as I said, I do it from God. So I had a baptism of love experience in December of 1999 where the liquid love of Papa just came over me. So I knew Jesus. I knew the Holy Spirit. And I could probably have written a book about the fatherhood of God, but I just didn't know Papa. I yeah. had a view of God that did not look like Jesus. Hmm. And I didn't realize Jesus was perfect theology. And when Jesus says in John 14, 18, I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you. The reason he's saying that in John 14, 18, all he said is what he heard the father say. It was right. actually why of the father that says that this whole world, 7.8 billion people has become a worldwide orphanage. And it happened when Adam and Eve no longer had a home, when they left the garden and they no longer had a father and they had to start to cover up. That's what orphans has to do. So now mm -hmm. you have to be providing yourself. You have to protect yourself. So the biggest thing, orphans live their life like they don't have a home. You can have a mm -hmm. 10,000 square foot house, but you don't have a home. You mm -hmm. don't have a place in the Father's presence. So instead, you're either dealing with 
prodigal son tendency, rebellion, or prodigal brother tendency, religion. That both right. of those, you're not in the father's presence. So for me, the journey was very painful because everything, it didn't matter how much I did for God. I had seen a half a million people saved and 300,000 people healed by the year 2000, but I was broken. And on mm -hmm. the inside, I had this black hole in my soul. And it didn't matter how much I did, I should have done something more. And as a result of when I don't do enough, my wife don't do enough, my children don't do enough. Anyone that's working for me doesn't do enough because that was the value system in the orphan world. Right. It can right. be manifested differently. It can be just passive, fear of doing anything. And there's yeah. many ways the orphan spirit can be manifested. But instead of when you are waking up in the morning like Jesus with an A plus on your report card before you take the exam, then <laughs> wow, it's a whole different way of living and loving when you suddenly are living fully loved. And when you don't have these love deficiency, then you're not looking for the approval of anybody else when you have fully the approval of Papa God. And right. then you're free because whom the sun set free is free indeed. And then free people sets people free. And suddenly they go, you know what? Wow, this wow. love really starts to spread around and it is <laughs> contagious. <laughs> Wow, Leif. <laughs> I need a breather after that. That was oh, wow. Come on. my meaning that was so powerful. And and what I heard you saying is is uh you know that that orphan spirit when we don't know that we're loved and we have that we don't have a home, that was powerful, that we blow our lives up. Uh I could I could certainly join with you in the story of of being that prodigal that made a total mess of my life and then switching over into the religious thing and not only making myself miserable, but everyone around me. <laughs> and neither of those is the answer. Um, but, but, and yet, and you and I both know this, it, it requires, there's, a, there's gotta be a way in which, in which God himself, Abba, Papa reaches in through his spirit and grabs hold of us in some significant way. And you just shared about, you know, one of those, that moment of liquid love. I have a similar experience um mine lasted a couple weeks of just when i felt like a real failure and just he just loved on me i was crying and crying for weeks <laughs> he just he every time i'd say but you can't love me he'd just say Shh, <laughs> just let me love you some more and oh my goodness i needed the washing 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 so so beautiful life um so okay so now people are i, I i'm imagining you know that those who are listening watching they're 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 starting to identify like, yep, I can see ways in which which I got that orphan thing going on. They're wanting something different. You know, uh, share some more. What I know you shared your experience, but but how here you go around sharing love with millions. Uh, what do you say to people who say, I've got to have that love. I don't want to live this way anymore as an orphan. Now, I think that first of all, change is very difficult. And, and it's requiring change for us. And God is, of course, the ultimate change agent through the Holy Spirit. And usually what happens with a lot of us is that we hurt enough what we have to change. So mm -hmm. to you, it happened to me that there's enough pain in your life that you realize, either through religion or rebellion, uh, that there's things in you that suddenly you realize, I can't go on this way any longer. That's mm -hmm. it. But that's not enough, because if not, everybody would stop smoking when their lungs is not good or they would stop drinking when the doctor tells them it's not good for your liver and et cetera. So people, it's not enough, but it's a starting point, recognizing mm -hmm. some pain. Second of all, now you learn enough where you want to. When I certainly now realize, wow, I don't have to live as an orphan any longer. I can actually live as a son. And so like for me, one of my favorite scripture verses that I brought with me today is Romans 8, verse 14 to 16. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. <laughs> And the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons or daughters of God or the children of God. So yeah. this, for me, one of the pain elements for me was the root fear that I had. Mm. So we can ask anyone that is watching, do you have a root fear in your life? Uh, one of my best friends, his root fear is to be lonely, to be not having somebody around. Different mm. people have different fear. And I realized for me was losing the anointing. 
And I didn't realize I was addicted to the anointing because when mm. the first everything that I'm called to do, I need the anointing. And then sometimes God was just hiding. <laughs> he was hiding his presence from me. And then I didn't realize that I had this root fear in me, mm. a place where love had not yet gone. So that was the first aspect. So I'm asking people, actually, when you're looking in your past, is there still guilt? If you're mm. looking in the mirror today, do you see shame? Because shame will tell you who you are not. Papa God would always tell you who you are. Right. And then if you look into the future, if there's fear for the future, you fear uncertainty. So that was one of those indicators for me personally speaking and out of the word of God here that the spirit of bondage of fear is not something that Papa has given us. It mm -hmm. is giving us the spirit of adoption where we are being adopted from the orphanage into family. So we mm -hmm. have a place at the table. So that was one major key. Another key that has been for me uh, and that has been, do I love me the way Papa God loves me? Hmm. And that's a hard thing for me to do because yeah. Jesus loved Jesus the way the Father loved Jesus. That's right. called covenant. And if not, there is going to be something in your life that the enemy will have and will continue to attack. Because when there is not love deficiency, there is not God deficiency. Right. So first I experienced in 1990 now how much he loves me. But then in 2006, I went through a process where he was teaching me to love me the way that he loves me. Mm -hmm. So he says, that is selfish. I said, no, that's selfless love. Right. That is suddenly when you are in agreement, when I see me the way Papa God sees me. Yeah. And so there's a lot of things that is true about Leif Hetland, but it's not the truth. And knowing the truth sets me free. Mm -hmm. So you're totally free. And if not, what are some of those areas that is stopping freedom? So right. what I realized just with an orphan heart, there's usually an orphan spirit that is attached to it. In the orphan heart, I cannot cast out an orphan heart. What I have to do is give the orphan heart a hold. Mm -hmm. And I store them back. So when the Bible says Jesus is the way, way to where? Jesus is the truth. Truth about what? He said, if you've seen me, you've seen what? So I realized that change happened also. That It's not just what I've been saved from, but what mm -hmm. I've been saved to. So if not, I, I had only half a gospel, what I've been saved from. And mm -hmm. it came to focusing on what we'd be saved to. And mm -hmm. that is bringing us back home again to the Father. The same yeah. relationship he had with the Father. The same love, the same glory. That's what John 17 is all about. And he's praying mm -hmm. that we're going to have that same experience. And especially in John 17, 26, where he says, Father... Father, I have declared your name among them, and I will have declared that the very love, Papa, that you have towards me, that love is going to be in Brent. That love is going to be in place. That yes. love is going to be in each one of us. And then yes. I in them. That's the Christ in us that is the hope of glory around us. So yes. the simplicity, if there is fear in there, the orphans always have fear. And mm -hmm. they are looking for security. And the way you're looking for security, well, if I maybe have possession or if I have mm -hmm. that pride, if I, you're looking for security in the wrong places because yeah. you don't have the security in Papa God. Mm -hmm. Then they're also looking for love. And then they're looking for love in the wrong places because if you don't receive the love from Papa, you're going to go somewhere else. And if right. I just get married, then I'm going to get the love. And you mm -hmm. realize that all what you're doing is you're trying to get something from somebody else because you don't have something to give, unconditional love, because you have not received unconditional love and you yes. cannot give something you didn't get and it starts yeah. with tension in marriage tension in relationship and then if you don't have value you have a value deficiency which is also a god deficiency and then you always live for measure instead of fullness right so, so good so you hurt enough where you have to you learn enough where you want to now the mm -hmm. third one is you receive enough where you're able to that's when the baptism of love came in that's why mm -hmm. grace in that's when humility comes in when i recognize and i say papa i i need you i mm -hmm. need this love i recognize in my condition i recognize there is i'm competing with other people or i'm right. hearing this person get healed why didn't i get healed or or i'm looking at i have a measure it's almost like there is a pizza and there's eight slices and all those people got a slice now there's no slice for me that's a typical mm -hmm. orphan mentality instead mm -hmm. of papa god owns the bakery so change happens that we either hurt enough. Now I, I have to change. I have to do something about it. Or I start to learn enough where I want to change. 
like I didn't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know mm. about the baptism of love. So suddenly I started to learn about it. And I saw people in my life that was more had more power than I had. And when I heard Randy's story, I learned enough where I wanted what he had. And the third one, I receive enough where I'm able to. And that's what happened with me through the baptism of love. I've received enough love. And often that comes through humility because mm -hmm. God gives grace to the humble. And it requires grace because even in my best effort, it is not enough. And especially right. as an orphan. So then I'm coming before a good, good father. And I think that many of us, because our view of the father doesn't look like Jesus, that was also a big challenge for me. And as a result of that, I started to look at the Father with different lenses. And that changed mm -hmm. how I was seeing myself. And that changed right. how I saw my wife and how I see the world and how I see everything else. But it started with a 2020 vision, getting a view of God that looks like Jesus. Then right. seeing the way that he sees me. Then everything changed in the lenses, including how I saw scriptures, how I saw everything. Because as an right. orphan, I came from a fear perspective. But now... And being a son and being led by the spirit as a son, all I do is what I see my father do. And I only right. have to say what my father says, before nations was problems to be achieved, now it is promises to be received. It's mm, good. It's good. Yeah. Man, I so appreciate I appreciate your realness too, Leif, and sharing, you know, sharing the real struggles along the way. And and uh, like like you, I just want to say that there was I, I had received in a special way, the father's love, but it wasn't till years later that, uh, I got woken up one morning and, and I distinctly heard Papa's voice saying to me, I want you to love yourself. Mm. And I, and I, and I thought, well, God, I thought I was loving yourself. And he said, no, I want you to love yourself the way I do. And, and that's when I said, well, you're going to have to show me then. And so I've been in this process and, and, uh, you know, as you know, because you're a good friend of mine, there, there is a process involved. And, uh, I, I feel like, I feel like I'm just coming to that place of loving myself the way he does. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, then the flow of love really starts, starts coming through. So I, I, what I love about this conversation is that we're not just telling people, oh, it's just a quick, you know, zing, uh, uh, you know, the right, you know, uh, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? A, a one-time prayer and everything. No, there's a process of not only of receiving his love, of, of letting him teach you to love yourself, but also even, and you and I have talked a lot about this, is making choices, good choices based on one who is loved is very different. And uh, But we still do have choices. And, yeah. and so it's this beautiful process, uh, as you've been explaining, that I just so, uh, you know, resonate with. And um, so what I would love, however you want to do this, Leif, uh, because really we both agreed step one is that at some point after knowing our need to be loved is that we need to experience that love from the Father. And uh, I just love how you uh, release that, um, you know, so any way that you'd want to do that, I, I, anything else you want to say, please. Yeah, I, I just thought about the, the story in Luke 15 that became a paradigm shift for me. And maybe this is just for some of the people watching, but it's worthwhile giving it. Because for me, and I believe in the holiness of God, I know you do too. So God is a holy God. But my view as an orphan is that the Father cannot handle my messes. Mm. Because I have a view of God that didn't look like Jesus. Sinners and tax collectors love being around Jesus. Why don't they love being around me? <laughs> because I didn't know I had a lot of religion. And as a result of that, what I realized I had a view of God when there was sin or issue in my life, he was a holy God. He couldn't handle it. So he turned away from me. That was my view. And that's the orphan. And what I realized actually when there was sin in my life or issues in my life, I'm actually the one that is turning away from his love. Mm -hmm. He stands there with open arms. Mm -hmm. and I realized that in Luke 15, the story is, of course, about the prodigal son. And I used to say he repented, but read it in the scripture. He had not repented yet. The Bible right. says the father was looking. And I feel this is a word for people. The father is looking towards you right yeah. now. So if yeah. you feel you're not able to hear his voice, it's not that he's not speaking. It just means, as I'm saying, that you have moved away from the place to receive his voice. So the father was looking and he's not, not looking away from you in your worst moment, in your worst mess. This is a Jewish boy eating pigs. Hmm. 
the food of pigs when Jews cannot even eat pigs. I mean, Jesus describing a story how far away from love you can be and still right. father's looking towards you. So I'm yes. saying that somebody here that's especially struggling with shame. No, no, the father is looking and shame. Somebody maybe say shame on you, but Papa God says shame off you, shame off you right now, shame off you. Because the father came there and he wants to remove away all shame, remove yeah. away the fig leaves. So the father is looking. The second, the Bible says the father was full of compassion. Yes, mm. compassion for you when you are hurting, when you are messing up. Yes, compassion towards you. Then the third one, it says the father was running. And by the way, he didn't run away from you. He ran towards you. Right. And in, in, in Middle East, this is important for me, is that he must lift up his cloak. And that means he shows his leg. That is shameful in the Middle East. For a mature father to show his legs. But that's the only way he could run because the Greek word for running was sprinting. It was not jogging a little bit. I mean, he was running. And mm -hmm. as a result, the father was willing to become shame so that we are glorified. Mm. And then another thing, then the father embrace, embrace, embrace. And we need an embrace from Papa God in this right. season. That embrace right. changes the embrace for anything else. And then the father was kissing and he kissed him over and over and over again. And then repentance came in because it is the goodness and the kindness and the love of the father that leads to repentance. So I, yes. I want to just to share that with people because the enemy would lie. The enemy would say that, hey, now, because you've got issues in your life, the father cannot handle it because he is a holy God. And you have mm -hmm. to be clean. Religion says you have to be clean to take the bath. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a very tricky thing because that's what we try to do we're trying to get things in place so that the father can accept us no he has already accepted you the problem mm -hmm. with you you're not accepting yourself and what is happening now the safest way for everyone that is watching right now is turn your affections towards a god that is looking towards you and yes. the eyes of love the eyes of love changes everything the way he's mm -hmm. looking at Brent, the way he's looking at life the way he's looking at you those eyes of love changes everything it's like mm -hmm. that's my boy. that's my girl well i can see the joy it doesn't matter if you score or do not score it matter that the father loves you and i'm just saying here too and i'm prophesying over somebody here because the picture that i saw was like somebody that was going to play baseball and i saw the pressure there i wonder if i'm going to be able to hit the ball and then in a moment papa's yelling hey that's my boy that's my boy Woo! and the father is looking and in a moment you look up at him and you know, it doesn't matter if I hit that ball or not. It matters that my father is well pleased with me and yes. I'm not playing ball and I'm having fun. And I'm just sensing even in life, there's so many of you that are out there that's been trying to hit that ball or trying to shoot the shot or trying to do things in life. But stop for a moment and see yeah. that the father is looking at you. And it is not about scoring or not scoring. Did I get mm -hmm. healed or not healed? Is this the right word from God or not? And people are living from pressure instead of the father's pleasure. But I yeah. am just going to, at this very moment, release that look of the Father that changes the way mm -hmm. of everything. Jesus had that look, and he heard the Father's voice, Matthew 3, 17, that says, this is my beloved Son. And he's saying that to you right now. You are my beloved Son. You are my beloved daughter, whom I love, whom I love, and whom I am well Please. And Jesus heard that before he healed any sick, before he did any miracle, before he did anything. Mm -hmm. He had an A plus on his report card because mm -hmm. Papa would never wanted him to live from pressure, but just the Father's pleasure. And when the enemy was attacking him and he was trying to question him, Jesus already had the affirmation and the approval of his Father. And he didn't have to prove anything to the enemy. He already yes. had an A plus and he came out yes. of the world full of the spirit. Then you can start doing life and say the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. In the middle of bad news, you got good news. So Father, yes. I just release even for the people yes. that are watching that look, that look, that look, the way you looked at me. Yes. Well, yes, Father. Thanks for everything. Those eyes of love, the eyes of approval, the eyes that just says, you're my favorite one. I yes. love you. <laughs> you yes. are beautiful. You're valuable. A little girl, I was watching somebody that's watching here now. It's like that little 12-year-old girl. Maybe you are in the middle 30s now, but 12-year-old girl. And Papa says, hey, would you dance with me? And I saw mm -hmm. that it 
white dress on that 12 year old girl and you're stepping up on his shoes and he is starting to dance and i saw that he was swirling you around and he brought you back again and suddenly there was freedom in the dance there was intimacy in the dance and even your height around 12 years old you put your head into his chest and your heartbeat started to beat with his heartbeat mm. and then change you in a moment you looked up at him and he looked at you and at that moment there was healing of that 12 year old girl's heart mm -hmm. everything that she went to as a 12 year old suddenly i saw the innocence the purity the wholeness all of it was healed through the look of her father with a yes. white dress just blessed that i don't know who that is that is watching but i just saw yes. that 12 -year -old girl in the spirit and i'm releasing that look of love to every guy and every girl that is out there Yes. And love and then the compassion that he has towards you oh i just ask that that compassion is just going to overwhelm us in such a way that we will be filled with that compassion mm -hmm. with other people that's what jesus experienced with his father whoa and that we are going to experience it again that's jesus prayer the last prayer in john john 17 26 that's the prayer he has for each one of us yeah. that we're going to experience then also realizing at this moment when you stopped up for a moment and just make room for his love. He is now running towards you. You don't even yes. have to do it. Just stay still. Be still and know that he is God. He is a loving father. And he's running. And he doesn't care about anything else. He's just looking right. at you. And then That's he takes right. his arms around you. And those sloppy wet kisses of Papa God, it changes everything. It changes everything. So, Father, just do what yeah. you did with me. Overwhelm every one of us with your love so that nothing yeah. else can overwhelm us. Overwhelm yeah. us with your love so we cannot be overwhelmed by fear any longer. We cannot be overwhelmed by shame any longer. We cannot be overwhelmed by guilt any longer. Just allow yeah. these, whoa, these waves and waves and waves of the Father's <laughs> love just start to sweep over us and sweep over the marriages, sweep over the children, sweep over the grandchildren, the tsunami yes. wave of love. Father, we just want to drink from that love. Just in Ezekiel there, when suddenly, it's, let it touch our feet, the way we walk. Let it touch our knees. Let it touch our loins. We're going to go into the ocean of love right now with you, Papa. And it's a little scary as we're going in there. But fi finally, I see that the love goes up to our chest. And mm -hmm. you think, I, I don't know if I can handle anymore. And he says, just go a little bit deeper. And he said, well, I'm going to drown. And he says, yeah, I'm about to drown you in my perfect love. Well, you are my love. And my love is in you. That's when glory is released. It is like a fish in water. It's like an eagle in the sky. It is friend <laughs> lover. And life had been in that ocean of love with the Father God. At that moment is when you find fully, fully, fully your freedom. That's when you become mm -hmm. who you were before the foundation of the war. When he yeah. made you in love, blameless and holy, Ephesians 1.4. With, that's when you are so rooted and grounded in his love that you're experiencing the depths, the width, the length, and the height of that love so that fullness can dwell in there. You will never be satisfied by living from measure because you will live from his fullness. So, Father, I <laughs> honor the way you're loving on out there. It is, yeah. Oh. <laughs> That joy that is coming from living fully loved. That joy, joy, joy. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I just yeah. feel he say, I am restoring your innocence and your childlikeness back. And I remember I sat at my kitchen table so tired and beaten down on a Christmas. And then Father Papa just came in and said, son, when did it stop being fun? When did it mm. stop being fun? And I think that for some of us even out there that he's going to restore the joy of our salvation again. Yeah. One factor come back. That, well, we've taken a little bit too serious. The beatings that has been there. It is this hope deferred that has made your heart sick. But he says in this season, you're going to start to desire again and dream again because it is the tree of life. And I just yeah. see Papa's healing hope again. Some of yes. you have been looking into the future and now you're going to have hope. And some have even had some, uh, there was actually some funerals of some dreams that Papa God has reminded you it's not over. There was mm. maybe a Friday moment for you, but Sunday is coming. Yeah. Some of you maybe even had a Saturday and it's been a six month Saturday. For somebody else, it was a two year Saturday from it seems like everything was dying. And it's just been this dark moment. And I'm just hearing him saying, even though you shall walk through the valley of shadow of death, you shall fear no evil because mm -hmm. I am with you. You're, go you're not going to stop in the middle of it. You're going to walk through it together with 
Papa. And he's yes. going to lead you to the other side. And yes. you're going to at that moment, you're going to be able to help other people that are experiencing a long, long Saturday and invite them into a glorious Sunday. Because after Friday, Sunday is coming. After you, when you feel everything is dying, I want to just encourage somebody at this moment. Sunday is coming. Yes. Sunday is coming. So he'll yeah. hope. He'll hope. I just release that because I feel it. That's what the father wants for his sons and daughters in this season. Mm -hmm. But I'm able to see after this storm what it looks like on the other side. You yes. can trust him. You can trust yes. him. He is so trustworthy. And I'm just feeling even he says that in the place of surrender is also the place of exchange. So just give it up. Yes. When you give up, yes. go up. And it is yes. just any of the fear, anything you had to hold on to, just let go of it. And just surrender to his love. It's the safest place you can be in the arms of the Father that right. loves you. Right. Wow. And I and I I really hear the Father saying to some of you who need to hear this, I am not disappointed with you. <laughs> I'm not disappointed with you. You see, we we get disappointed with ourselves and we think God's disappointed, but no, he's saying, No, actually, I see the you that I created. I know. I know the true you that I created, and that one is the only one that I see, and that's you are the one that I love, and and uh, and and also I hear him saying, "Remember, I chose you first. I chose you first, and I chose you to be my home. It's not only that my heart is your home; it's that I chose you to be my home. I chose to live in you as as the holy of holies." and make you my dwelling place because I wanted to be with you. I've always wanted to be with you. Mm. So I'm just declaring to each one of you, you belong, you belong. You are not an orphan. You are not outside. You're not another. You belong. You are one with the father, one with Jesus who loves you, who's, who's taken you into himself. And so I just bless you with that. I bless you with rest. Mm. Rest, rest in the Lord instead of trying to figure it all out and trying to make yourself better. Rest, let him love you and watch the miracle that takes place as his life infuses yours with everything that he is. Amen, amen, amen. I just bless you with that, my friends. And, <laughs> and Leif, I know we could kind of go on all day here, but I'm just so grateful for your heart, your love. Uh, you've been a, a, a big part of my transformation, you know, just God using each other, uh, uh, you know, as he always does, just using very various ones along the way to mm -hmm. just kind of take us up to a new place of awareness of his love. And you've been that for me. So I'm so grateful. So thankful that you came uh, and spent some time here with me. Uh, is there is there anything else you, you want to like like if people wanted to follow you anything any any place you would send them they want to know yeah, what you're yeah. doing I mean they, just if you look at my name but I also mentioned in a, it's coming out now next month the love uh -huh. awakening so I think it fits very well with the topic the love awakening where you get the up in love in and then the out in love so that. And pretty much what we're doing is we're raising up ambassadors of love that would represent heaven on earth. And it is kind of like a love school, a love yeah. awakening school to be part of this incredible agape reformation. So I'm very excited about that. I spent two years in the middle of this COVID just to be able to, 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 to write this book that I've dreamed of for a long time. And maybe you know that November 24th, I received the International Peace Award by the president of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. So when the president of Pakistan mm -hmm. gave me the award, I have it right over here. It says, as an ambassador of love. And I just realized that's my heart for everyone that is out there, that we will be ambassadors of love in our homes, in our classroom, wherever we are, that we will represent heaven in such a way that the world can see. Yeah. So good. Are, by the way, we love one another. Yes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> It's what Jesus said would happen. Man, I'm so, um, Leif, I'm so, so proud of you. Just, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in awe of God just because I know it's, you know, his spirit that does what he, what he does, but just so love you. So in awe, uh, and, and so proud of you. So thank you again for uh, joining me here and, 
And to all of you out there, we, Leif and I both, we just bless you with the Father's love and with great peace and joy in your life. Amen. Amen.